figuring this out. We are glad that you are joining us. This is a special day. This is the day. Oh, I'm going to cry. Um, I wasn't expecting that. Um, this is the day where we are celebrating what God has done through Grace Point, what God is going to continue doing through Grace Point, and what God is doing through Rooted Community Church. And there is a lot of emotion around this day. There's some excitement, right? We are pumped. This room is buzzing, but there might be some sadness too, right? Some of our friends and our colleagues, they're going to a different church, a different building. We're not going to see them every week. Maybe there's a little bit of uncertainty or anxiety. What does this mean for these churches? What does it mean for these bodies of believers? And some of you may be looking around this room going, I had no idea they went to my church, <laughs> right? Because we don't all get to see each other. So this is fantastic. But no matter what you are feeling today, we are here as the church. Not a church, not Grace Point, not Rooted, but the church, the body of Christ. And we are here to worship him. Not a leader, not people, but him. 
It's our prayer that from many years from now, when all of us in this room are gone into heaven, that there will be people and churches that rooted and Grace Point will continue to be making disciples and that maybe there will be hundreds of other new churches, new expressions, new bodies of Christ because of what is happening in this room today. And here's why. This is from Colossians 1, 15 through 20. The Son, Jesus Christ, is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For in him all things were created, Things in heaven and on earth, the visible and the invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authority, all things have been created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together, and he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning and the firstborn from the dead, so that in everything he might have supremacy. For God was pleased for in him his fullness to dwell and through him to reconcile all things to himself, whether things of earth or things in heaven, by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. We just want to start this day in prayer. So if you will just pray with me, Um, feel free to raise your hands. Uh, Whatever posture uh, can help you put Christ first in this moment. Heavenly Father, you reign above all. You reign above this moment, this time. You reign above Grace Point. You reign above Rooted Community Church. You reign over Topeka and Kansas and the United States and this whole world. So, Lord, we bring this day to you, this service we bring to you as an offering. Today, we humbly come and seek your presence and your blessing on this offering. Holy Spirit, empower your church. Move in this room. Move through Rooted Community Church. Move through Grace Point. Ignite a fire in our city. Be glorified in the work of these churches. Be glorified in this service today. But most importantly, be glorified in our hearts. Through these churches, we ask that you call the 96,000 unchurched and dechurched people into community with you. Use our churches to invite people into the peace only found in your blood shed on the cross, not for our glory, not so that our churches grow, but so that you are recognized as the head of the body, the head of the church, and as supreme. We ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a seat, everybody. At this time, I'm going to invite the other Nikki up here, um, and we're going to have a little moment for our kids. So kids, if you want to come right up here, we have something special for you. Get on up here, kiddos. All right. There are so many grown-ups in this room, so I'm so glad that the kids are coming. You guys, I am so nervous, so I need to see my friends. I need to see you. You guys all look so good. Rhonda, don't they look great today? You want to know why? Because we all got to sleep in a little longer, right? It's good news. How was school this week? Wow, that was very unenthusiastic. That's all right. It was a long week, but you did it. I'm so proud of you. Okay, so here's what you guys can do. Everybody turn around so they can see you because they all want to see your adorable, wonderful. I'm so, aren't they, aren't they the best? And you guys are really brave that you came up. So I'm really proud of you for being so brave and coming up. So what you get to do now is you can kind of find a spot here on the floor, just like we do at the fort, even though Ron and I are way higher than we used to be. And then just um, turn, sit so you're seeing us, so you can see us. Okay? So go ahead. Take a seat. Take a seat. Take a load off your feet. What? What? Okay, what are we doing next? Oh yeah, we are going to play because what do we do in the fort? We play, we play, we play games. So I thought we would play a little game that we'll do a little teaching moment on, all right? So who thinks that they are the very best at cup stacking, at cup building towers? Because you guys, listen, the fort is in the basement. If you have never been down there, mm, You need to change that, but um, 
these kids will take, we have a bucket of cups and they will build towers to the ceiling and it is their most exciting moment of their lives sometimes. All right, so who wants to, who wants, I need a few, a few people on each team. All right, Rhonda, you wanna pick? And then once we pick you, you're gonna come up these steps over here. Am I yelling? I feel like I'm yelling. Okay, okay, good. All right, Kennedy, come on up. Isaac, come on up. I was gonna do three per team. Okay, let's see, what do we got here? Let's get a whittle one, a whittle, whittle one. I love you all. Oh, she's already got him. Thank you, I can't do math. Okay, all right, so I need three over here. Okay, it's fine, it's fine, just, just go. Okay, thank you, Jacqueline. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. Somebody out there, like Faith, or somebody is going to set their clocks for 40 seconds, okay? Their phones, whatever. And you guys are going to work together to try to build the, fast, the nicest tower that doesn't fall down. Now, if it falls down, if it falls down, don't give up. Just keep trying. Just keep going. And then when we say, time's up, your hands are up in the air. You got it? Yes. You guys understand over there? Okay, Ben, are you good? Yeah. All right, good. All right, so you guys are gonna pick your team. You're gonna cheer them on. You can cheer everybody on. We're gonna make this place so loud that whatever is going on across the street in that building, they're gonna hear us, okay? Well, can you do that? Fine. They could, they could. All right, uh, are you coaching them? No. Still take it off the little lip. No coaching. Okay, okay. it's fine, we're good. Are you helping? No. Oh, okay. All right. Ready, set, go. All right, you got to work together. Build that base. There you go. All right. You guys are doing good. How much time do they have left? 20 seconds. 20 seconds left. Wow. <laughs> this is not really good for the teaching moment to follow. I think but it fell when it, when the drums went. It was their fault? Yeah, was it their fault? Yeah. Oh, Robbie. Come on. All right. <laughs> All right. Good job, guys. Thank you so much. We'll get this cleaned up in a minute. You guys can go ahead and take a seat back where you were. You were awesome. Give them another round of applause. <coughs> All right. Rhonda, we don't have time to clean up right now. So. I don't know. What are you doing? I'm cleaned up. <laughs> true. True. No, you're so much more efficient. Um, so Rhonda is going to read for us um, out of Colossians again, but this is a really special verse because rooted, um, I know this is a verse that they're using at their church, at least I hope so. And if not, it's a really good verse anyways for us. Got it? All right. So, and as she reads it, remember kiddos, this is, this is from God's word. So we're going to be listening with our hearts and letting Jesus fill our hearts up with his word. It's not even your parents' word. It's not Rhonda's word. It is whose word? God's word. So it is, it can last with you forever and ever. And as she reads it, you can kind of look up at this picture up here of a tree. Okay, let's watch. Let's listen. All right, you guys ready? Here we go. Colossians 2, 6 verses, verses 6 and 7 says this, You received Christ Jesus as Lord, so keep on living your lives in Him. Have your roots in Him. Build yourselves up in Him. Grow strong in what you believe, just as you were taught. Be more thankful than ever before. Awesome. I love how it ends. What was the very last thing that she said? Thankful. Yeah, be more thankful than 
ever before. And today we are more thankful than I've been, been ever because of what God is doing. But if you guys look up at that tree, it kind of talks a little bit about that verse. How is that tree so strong? What is keeping that tree there? Just holler it out. The roots. That's right, the roots. I have a tree in my backyard and it is in the worst possible space that it could be in. Not for mowing though. That's what my husband says. For mowing, it's in a great space. But for shade, it's worthless. It is worthless. And so guys, I'm always like, man, sitting on my deck, I wish I could move that tree. Wish I could move that tree. But... Do you think, I mean, I know, I'm pretty strong. Do you think when I go up to that tree and I just push on it, is anything gonna happen to that tree? No. No. Because of the roots, that's right. Those roots are so strong and so deep. No matter how much I want that tree to move or how much working out I were to do, I could not move that tree. And that is what God wants for you guys. And so he wants you guys to remember that when you build your life in Jesus and on God's word, you will be as strong as that tree or the tree in my backyard. It is a beautiful tree. It's just in the wrong spot. So you will be as strong as that and you will not be moved because sometimes when we follow Jesus, sometimes we no, when we follow Jesus, we want to have all of these roots so strong that nothing can move us from following Jesus. Not doing bad on a math test won't stop us from following Jesus. Our friends not being nice to us that week, that should not stop us from following Jesus. There should be nothing that stops us from following Jesus. And the more you get strong roots and the more you know about Jesus, the stronger you will be. So we're going to finish up. We have a project we have a little project that you guys are going to take home and you're going to finish it real quick because we want you to pray for Rooted Church because we want everybody in Rooted Church, those who are already starting, you kids that are already going, and then the kids that you don't even know yet that the Lord is going to bring to you to grow up and have strong roots and to just live lives that are thankful that they know Jesus. So you're going to get this little bag. I left mine behind. All right, so the ladies are going to start passing this out. So you get this little bag. And it's got a wet paper towel in it, but it is not to use for your sweat today, okay? You are going to put, and then they're going to give you, you're going to open it up, and they're going to give you a couple of lima beans. Does anybody like lima beans? I know, Miss Libby likes them. Who else likes them? Kennedy, you like them? Kylo does too? Wow. All right, I know. So you're going to put these lima beans in your bag. Then you are going to take them home and you're going to tape them onto a sunny window. So I used to do this with my kids. We'd tape it up on the window and so the sun would shine on it. And in a couple of days, those beans are going to sprout. What do you think? Roots. It won't, it won't be a tree, but it will be roots. And we have a little sticker you're going to put on it. And the sticker says, please remember to put, when you see these roots to pray for Rooted Church because we want to give them as many prayers as we can so that they can continue to strong, be a strong church that um, is showing other people the love of Jesus. All right? So did I get it all, Rhonda? I think so. We're going to finish this up. Should we finish this up while you guys do worship? Sure. Okay. Great. So they're going to start singing some songs again, and you guys will finish this up. And then when you get everything in your bag that you need, you can go back to your seats with your family. I love you guys so much. I hope you have a great day.
of it all. You were worthy of it all. For from you are all things, and to you are all things. You deserve. God, we give you all the praise and glory that you are worthy. You are welcome in this place. So God, hear your church as we lift up our voices this morning. God, what a day of celebration to be. Like we were saying earlier, a lot of people you probably hear you haven't seen in a while. But God, they are welcome here. God, this is your church. This is your body. So God, be with us this morning as we glorify you with everything that we do, with everything that we are, and everything we say. In Jesus' name we pray, as church said, amen. Whew, you can find a seat. Man, again, who knew you went to church with this many people? We came in here last night to set this place up, and all these chairs were in here, and I said, well, this is going to be ridiculous. We don't need this many chairs. Oops. Uh, hey, it's uh, it's good to be uh, with you all. Man, it's really, really a great day. This all seemed like a great idea until it was here, and now it's kind of gut-wrenching, you know? So here we are. Uh, hey, I just want to take a moment and share with you. Some of you have asked. Some of you have been updated on prayer lists and that sort of thing. And some of you don't know any of this. Uh, Rooted Community Church has indeed uh, found a place to worship. Yeah, we're excited for that. Sure, good. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I would like to tell you that I never doubted that we would, but if I'm honest with you, I kind of doubted <laughs> that we would. Uh, but we did. So we'll launch in October. October 12th is our launch date. We pushed it back a little bit because we got some work to do uh, on the facility. So I just want to share with you some of the, uh, just for a moment, some of the most unique and uh, like fulfilling ministry that my wife and I have ever done uh, had to do, it was, a na- it was neighborhood ministry. We, we used to live in a neighborhood that we found out that the neighborhood we lived in when we were kind of, you know, young, trying to find our way in this world, married people, uh, we found out that they, the neighborhood we lived in uh, was on like 90% free or reduced lunches for the public schools that lived around us. Uh, so like we were among them, we were with them, and we, we said to ourselves, and frankly, we said to our small group uh, 10 years ago, same group we've been meeting with all this time, uh, we said to them, uh, you know, we should do something. Like, how do we bless this neighborhood? So we, we just kind of came up with this really easy, it's frankly, it's kind of low-hanging fruit in terms of like hard work. We decided, let's do an Easter egg hunt. Maybe these kids need some candy at Easter. And then we thought, well, that'd be cool. What if we bless their parents too? So uh, along with this Easter egg hunt that we started in our neighborhood at this little bitty park in our neighborhood, uh, 10, 11 years ago, and we did it for a number of years. We eventually moved away from there. We even did it a year after we moved away, but it, it eventually faded away for us. But we decided, let's do this Easter egg hunt. And so we, we gathered some Easter eggs between us and, you know, four or five other couples in our small group. And we decided, you know, let's, uh, let's just pray that 20 or 25 kids would show up and we could just be a blessing to them at Easter. So we did. We, we canvassed our neighborhood and we just kind of just took, you know, little invite cards, hey, on said day and, and you know, in April there's going to be an Easter egg hunt and everybody's welcome. It's just a neighborhood deal. Come on down, just walk on down. And, and we, we prayed that 25 kids would show up and it was great. And we decided we bless the parents too. So we actually just went and got like a bunch of gift cards at the Walmart and Target and, you know, all the, I don't know, quick shop for gas cards, that sort of thing. And our small group just kind of met at my house and filled Easter eggs, planning for 25 kids. Then 120 kids showed up. And it was so good. It was like so exciting. But, you know, we went, we went from telling our own kids, hey, get out there so we can, you know, critical mass, right? We need to make it look like some people are here. To then telling our own poor little four and five year olds, that's not for you. Come back. Come so we'll get, we'll get you some candy later. Uh, so it was good. Like we loved it. We really, 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 you ever have those moments in your life where you just uniquely experience the pleasure of Christ? 
where you just uniquely, I mean, I know we get that all the time, like as believers, right? But there's, I think there's certain times where our obedience to what he's specifically asking us to do just, just showers the pleasure of Jesus on us in ways that is so, so, so fulfilling and so satisfying. Well, for us, that was an Easter egg hunt. And we, we ended up sending, you know, single moms there who weren't sure how they were going to pay their groceries that week home with a way to pay their groceries. It was just so, so, so exciting. We left there and went, Tara and I said, you know, someday, someday this is going to look like our church. Like this is going to be, like it was uniquely kind of a way that God had just wanted to use us. So when we decided we were going to plant a church and when we announced this past January that we were going to plant a church, uh, one of my friends from that group, Abe, who's one of my, my closest buds in this universe, he said, hey, we should bring back an Easter egg hunt. I'm like, okay, man, you have at that. You go for it. So he's been collecting like, I don't know, 700,000 Easter eggs since, since last Easter. So, hey, by the way, if you have Easter eggs, we want them. Uh, he's been collecting Easter eggs, and he said, we're going to bring this back. So it was the most satisfying, most fulfilling. It wasn't singing songs. Listen, I love worshiping. I love it. I love preaching the word. I love, I love the so many things that you see as your, like, picture of, of church when we are gathered together as a church. But this was a way in which God was uniquely asking us to respond to the needs of the people around us. So we did it. It was so satisfying. It was so... Great. So we went into this thing thinking, okay, we want to find a way to do neighborhood ministry. You know, church is different for us. We're not trying to find the, the biggest, baddest building on the block that everybody drives by and will come to us. No, we're trying to go to them. We want to be near the people we're ministering to, be near the people we're ministering, hopefully with at some point. So we, uh, so we were really excited for that. So the other thing we wanted to figure out was how in the world do we get an in with the public school that we're there with? So this is so amazing. My sister... Uh, and her husband moved to Topeka July 4th weekend, I think, uh, to take, she, they came here for her job to take a position as a school counselor at what would become <laughs> the same school zone our building is sitting in. Isn't that amazing? I mean, if there's, if there's ever a way, if there's ever a way into that school, it's through the counselor, right? Like, thanks, sis. You're going to be pretty awesome for us in that. Uh, so, but there's a couple things on our list. We wanted to be in a school zone. We could take care of that school really well. And we wanted to be a neighborhood church who could take care of the neighborhood really well. The, the, in the, the Easter egg hunt was just one simple way for us to dive into that. So we found a space. I uh, showed this to our team a few weeks ago, so some of you have already seen this. Some of you haven't seen this yet, and lots of you from Grace Point that aren't coming to Rooted haven't seen this, so we just wanted to give you a quick, uh, just a quick, I don't know, picture of where we're going to be gathering, so check out this video. What's up, guys? Come on in. You were standing in the entrance to, uh, to the building. There's a hallway that goes down this way. We'll go down here in just a bit, but I'm going to take you this way and show you the gymnasium, which for us... Uh, will be our worship space. Now, uh, there's a daycare that meets here, and right now they've, you know, got some fun stuff happening here. Uh, but here before too long, this will be a space we fill with uh, a stage and audio and video and lighting and, uh, you know, all the chairs we'll need and all that good stuff. Now we'll have to do some setup and tear down each week. But this is going to be a really, really uh, cool space, a space we can grow with, a space that we can have lots and lots of visitors join us in. It's going to be a really really neat space. Uh, you know what? Let's just go right back out in the hallway. Follow me. As we head uh, down this hallway, there's some people right there you might want to see. <laughs> there's, uh, there's restrooms down here. Uh, this end of the building, so again, there's a daycare here. I'm going to be a little quiet because some of them are taking naps right now, but at this, at this end of the building is where they operate their daycare. We don't even need to go down that. That's kind of their space. And this end will be kind of our space. So again, walk with me. I'll take you to the kids area. And up we go. So this used to be a school building. It's been a school building for, I don't know, a hundred years or so. And they've just over the last two years stopped using it. And as you kind of just eye down the hallway, the, the rooms on the well, there's only rooms on the right side, but there's three rooms here on the right side of this hallway uh, that will house our uh, nursery and toddlers, our pre-K room, and our elementary room. So right now, they're not a lot to look at because they're just filled with stuff that's not being used. So uh, I don't even know if you can see. Maybe I'll flip a light on, maybe. I don't know, wherever the light even is. Uh, but these are all pretty good-sized rooms. We'll do some work in them to... Uh, you know, make them become ours. They said we can empty them out and find new homes for the stuff that's in here. So uh, that's kind of just what they all are. So we make our way down the end of the hallway. That's kind of just that the spaces that we just passed through, these three rooms will be ours for now. There is room to grow. Uh, there's bathrooms up here. Um, they have more classrooms up here for now. We're not, 
uh, going to use the other classrooms, but there is room to grow should we need it as our kids' ministry kind of grows and expands. All right, we're uh, going to head back out the door we came from. Uh, this is this is the west side of the building, and to our north, a block or two, is Sixth Street. Uh, to our south. Uh, we're right on 7th Street here, but another block down is 8th, which is the thoroughfare that kind of runs through here. I just want to show you uh, real quick. This is at the very west end of the lot. And I don't know how well you can see it from here, but we're right by a park. We're basically in a little park right here. And, and if you can't see it well, just take my word for it. But we're in a park right here. And I just want to share with you the significance of this park. This is the park that we began our Easter egg hunt in 10 years ago. Who would have thought? Who would have thunk? <laughs> right? Who would have thunk we'd be in this room today talking about this, celebrating this, um, shedding tears over this? As a pastor, I'm telling you, um, I would absolutely count those um, baby mannequins in my attendance. <laughs> that one's free. <clears throat> Late 1930s, um, Oklahoma farmers faced what was really an impossible decision. Um, if you remember history through the 1920s, there was plenty of rain and um, abundant harvests um, in the American Midwest. It was so good that factory workers from the East Coast actually left the cities to move to the Midwest at their chance at a gold rush, basically. They were even more motivated when the stock market crashed in 1929, but in 1931, the rain stopped. Stopped raining. On top of that, uh, years of poor farming technique in southeastern um, Colorado um, kind of took away some of the, the agriculture that helps maintain water during years of drought. So the dry ground combined with poor farming uh, resulted in these massive dust storms in Oklahoma, rolling in from the west and, and really destroying any remaining crops. So, so dreams and fortunes were swept away in these, these gray, dull blizzards known as dust storms. By the fall of 1939, thousands of farmers left the American, American Midwest to go back to the east coast. They'd spent their money. They'd spent everything that they had. They, had, they were empty-handed. But some of them stayed, and they faced an excruciating decision. They had just enough grain to feed themselves and their families for about a year. But not enough grain, necessarily, to, to last any longer than that. If they planted those seeds and there wasn't any rain, um, their families would starve, and they'd be penniless. But if they held on to the seeds, grinding them into flour to, 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 bre to make bread, there was no possibility of a harvest. So some of them planted in faith, maybe more in hope that the rain would come. And in the fall of 1939, <laughs> it did. Rain came. Here's the moral of the story. Planting always involves risk. Planting always involves risk. Those of you who grew up on a farm or in farming communities know all about this. When you plant the seed, you release control of something that could potentially feed your family. But if you don't plant the seed, you have no chance at a harvest. You have no chance of bringing anything in. You can no longer consume it as food, but if you refuse to plant, there'll never be a harvest. Planting always involves risk. Jesus used this same principle of the harvest when he wanted to teach his disciples about how his kingdom would work. Here's John chapter 12, verse 24. Jesus says, very truly, I tell you, unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. Now, in context, he's, he's actually talking about reaching the Gentiles, 
That's the life that he's talking about. The potential many seeds are the Gentiles that would become a part of the kingdom. And it's kind of an odd, an odd analogy because most of us don't think about a seed dying when we plant it. We think of that's actually when it starts to, to produce life. It's not, it's not dying necessarily. But if you ask my friend and resident horticulturist, Sean Hansard, that's exactly what a seed does. The seed dies. It goes into the ground and it dies. Multiplied life, multiplied harvest can't come from one seed until it's buried in the ground and it dies. Jesus was exactly right. Shocker, right? And it wasn't an agricultural lesson in and of itself. Jesus was after here. He was teaching a, a kingdom principle that in his kingdom, it's not simply about collecting as many seeds as you can. <laughs> it's not about counting them. It's not about polishing them. It's not about organizing them in nice, neat rows and creating bigger barns to keep them. His kingdom is about sowing the one seed that you have, allowing that seed to die, and then watching it multiply for his kingdom. See, there's a temptation. Let me kind of just be honest with you. There's a temptation for every pastor. There's a temptation for every church leader that, that they wrestle with at one level or another. The temptation is to define success by how many seats you have, how many people you can get in the seats, and how big your budget is. That's the temptation. And because of that, you define success by how many seats you have, how many people you can get in those seats, and how big your budget is. But nowhere in the Gospels, nowhere in the book of Acts, do you find Jesus or the apostles defining success like that? And in fact, if, if we take John 12, 24 seriously and what Jesus was teaching about the kingdom, he doesn't measure success of a local church by how large we grow the grain bins, but how much we trust him with planting the seeds. I love what Ed Stetzer says. He says that what if we judged a church by its sending capacity instead of its seeding capacity? Isn't that so upside down? It's so upside down. See, our God is a sending God. Our God is a sending God. He sent his best into the world to save us. Did you know the New Testament writers, they, they describe Jesus as sent over 40 different times. And then after his resurrection, Jesus passed on that identity to his followers. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. Our God is ascending God, which means as disciples, if we're not living sent as a church leader, if I'm not sending as a church, we're not staying true to the very definition of a disciple. If we don't send, we're not staying true to what Jesus told the original disciples. But as I've already said, planting always involves risk. It always involves sacrifice. It always involves sending costly things. It's easy to agree with that analogy and theory, but to go to the next step and invest resources to say goodbye to people that we love, man, that's hard. That's hard. There's a part of me that's aching today. I'm extremely excited to see what God does through Rooted Community Church. I'm extremely excited to watch as Pastor Mark and Tara follow the call that God has placed on their life. And I'm on the edge of my seat to see what God does in our community through this brand new thing today. And at the same time, I'm a little heartbroken to see them go. If, 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 I could, if I could make it about a feeling, I know feelings aren't facts, but it feels like there's a part of us that's dying today. Maybe that's too strong of a word, but it's how I feel. But, right, there's always, there's always a but with preachers. I want to remind us today that the trajectory of a disciple 
is always towards dying to themselves. Dietrich Bonhoeffer, when Christ bids a man to follow, he bids him come and die. That's quoting Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus didn't say, come follow me and grow. <laughs> Jesus didn't say, come and follow me and be comfortable. Jesus said, come follow me and die. Die to yourself. And then he showed us the example of what that means. When Jesus died on that hill in Jerusalem, he gave everything. Everything he owned was either given away or taken from him. But from that death came our life. In giving everything away, he gained us. In Jesus' death and resurrection, God brought life and hope into the world. See, Jesus was actually the very first of many planted seeds that had to die. And so it shouldn't surprise us that this movement, his church, his disciples, his people spreads all over the earth in the same way. Life for the world comes through the death of Jesus followers. Not necessarily, I'm not done yet, shut that off. <laughs> Life for the world comes through the death of Jesus followers, not necessarily our physical death, although we can't take that off the table. Brothers and sisters in Christ all over the world today have to go to church fearing their own death. So we can't take that off the table, but death in the giving away of ourselves, death in the forfeit of our personal dreams, death in our faithful proclamation of the gospel in an increasingly hostile culture, death in sending our resources, our best leaders, our best friends to see a harvest. When Jesus calls any of us to follow him, whether he's speaking to us as individuals or speaking to us as a body, as a church, he bids us to come and die. His way of bringing life to the world is not by giving us numerical growth that, that enriches our lives and exalts us. His way of bringing life into the world is resurrection from death. We live by dying. We earn by giving away. We gain by losing. And again, it's real easy for us to nod our heads in agreement and know this intellectually. It's another thing to pray and plan and actually do it, but that's the very reason we find ourselves here today. We have the privilege of commissioning and sending our very first church plant. Rooted Community Church is only a seed right now. Haven't seen a whole heck of a lot of fruit yet, but we're gonna plant it we're going to put it into the ground. There's going to be a piece of us that dies, and we're going to watch the Holy Spirit produce a harvest. This is why we're here today. So I'm actually going to ask Pastor Mark and Tara to come up on the stage um, here. Join me up here. We want to recognize them as leaders of this new church. Uh, we're going to commission them to the task of planting a multiplying church, and we're going to pray over them as well. But before we get to any of that, I wanted to give Mark um, just an opportunity um, to share with us um, one last time as a pastor of Grace Point. There will be other moments in the future when he comes back to Grace Point, so this isn't the last time we're ever going to see him, but um, I want to give him an opportunity to just to share um, with you um, from his family to you guys. So ready, set, go. <laughs> yeah, shocker there. Uh, and again, this seemed like such a great idea months ago. You know, when it's way out there, it's all, Tim and I were talking about this this past week, but now that it's here, it's, man, it's, it's tough. Uh, couple things. I'm really thankful to be a part of Ascending Church that's about multiplication over addition. Uh, and I just want to remind you that we're all, every one of us are endeavoring, uh, whatever church we call our home where we gather for worship over the next however long we get the privilege to do it, we're just trying to crowd heaven.
And I'm willing to do that. <laughs> even, and he's willing to do that. And your, your, your board here is willing to do that even when this stuff's hard. And I'm really grateful for that. I've said it before. I'll say it uh, till the day I don't have a voice anymore. Not too many church leaders will do what this guy's willing to do. You guys, uh, yeah. Uh, you guys that are, which is most of you, right? You guys that are remaining at Grace Point, it's your church home moving forward. I just want to encourage you, and with every bit of authority my voice can have, which isn't much, I get it, just remind you, you are at a great church. You're at a great church with great leaders and great people, and uh, I'm excited to be the church with Grace Point uh, moving forward. So uh, here's... It's been a ride. It's been a ride. It's been a good, been a good 12 years. Uh, Tara and I are grateful. We're thankful for your love, for your support, for your encouragement. Uh, I thought about standing up here and thanking specific people, but that feels like that'd take a while. On the other hand, what are they going to do? Fire me? (laughs) (laughs) Um, I'm grateful. Thanks, man. Thanks for the, thanks for the encouragement. Uh, I agree with him. Tim and I have these, these dreams, and I, listen, we don't know what the future holds, but we have these, these dreams, these thoughts that someday uh, we'll do this again while the two of us work together to plant another church. Uh, so, uh, I, I agree with them. This isn't the end you're seeing of us. It's just the end you're seeing of us in this way for, for a bit. Um, you're in good, good hands. Jake's, Jake's going to do a great job with this team moving forward, and, and I'm, I'm grateful to, uh, to pass the torch to him and to a good quality uh, team of, of people to lead you guys in worship. But can I just say, leading you guys in worship has been the absolute pleasure of my life. Stop it. Quit it. <laughs> if you guys are going to clap every time I say something awesome, you're going to get tired of clapping. <laughs> Touche. <laughs> uh, no. Uh, uh, listen. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, just thanks. 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 You guys have been a beautiful, beautiful picture of Jesus to us. Our kids, you know, it's easy for kids uh, to be pastor's kids and to get to a place where they resent how often they have to be at church and how often they have to miss their activities that they'd rather be doing and how often they have to do the things that, you know, we just kind of have to suck it up and do because dad works here and is part of the pastor life, right? Uh, Our kids have always loved being here, so... Uh, to our family ministry team, and I've said this for years, we, this is a church I would go to even if I didn't work here. If we were choosing a church, you guys are all smart people, right? Because you chose a great church. If we were choosing a church in Topeka to attend that didn't pay our salary, we would go to this church. The family ministry team has loved our kids like I just can't possibly even say. Our kids love being here every week, and that's such a gift to me. So thanks, Faith and Nikki and Rhonda and your guys' uh, team. That's a gift that we will treasure forever. Uh, I quit. Go. Okay. Hey, I'm going to ask the uh, rooted team, the core team, to come up here and join us. You bring your kids with you. Just come up here and gather um, right here in the front. I'm going to ask the board mem- my board members to come and join me up on the stage. We're going to pray for um, and... Okay, maybe you he's, should tell them. He's refer- so it's a little tricky. Our language. I'm sorry. What he means is the launch team. That's the language we use. If you're coming to Ruta, come stand up front. Come on. There you come go. On, come on. All of you. Come on. Everybody, come on. Come on. If you're coming, just come to line up down front. Yep. And then I'd like to, yeah, our, our Grace Point board, come and join me up on the stage. I'm going to pray for these individuals. One of the things that um, is left unsaid in moments like this is that... Um, Mark and Tara's yes to this doesn't mean that they have it all figured out, (laughs) 
right? Like, I think, I think one of the things um, when it comes to church planting is, well, they, they know everything that they're supposed to do, but saying yes to God isn't always easy, but I, I won't speak for them, but I think I will at the same time. Um, saying yes to God isn't always easy, but it's always worth it. And um, these individuals that are standing before you today are the individuals from Grace Point um, that are going to become a part of Rooted. So um, we're going to pray over Mark and Tara. We're going to pray over this team. I've asked a couple of um, our board members to pray. Um, Ann um, Dunn is going to start. Um, Todd Zimlich will pray next, and then I'll close um, our, our time in prayer. But if, if you're willing to, I would love for you um, just to stand where you're at. And um, as a sign of laying on of hands, I just want you to put out your hand and like you're putting your hand on a shoulder of one of these individuals um, as we pray for all of these people. Okay. So let's stand and let's pray over these individuals. Go for it, Ann. Lord, we thank you today for Mark and Tara, for the blessing they are and the blessing they've been to Grace Point. Thank you for the reflection of you through their joy, their genuine caring, their servant hearts, and their passion for you. We are grateful for the impact they have had on us individually and as a church. Today, we thank you for their willingness to obey the calling you've placed on their lives. I pray you will give them the courage, endurance, faith, and confidence in you to walk forward in this calling, to be faithful to the mission you have placed before them. We ask for your grace, your strength, your provision, your wisdom, and your anointing to sustain them and minister through them. Give them humility to listen, to be teachable, and willing to seek counsel. Give them boldness to stand for truth and righteousness. Lord, continue to form your heart in them, your passion for souls and your compassion for people. In the midst of hard times, may your joy strengthen them and may they recognize your abiding presence. Teach them to trust you in all things and experience you as the all-sufficient one. We also pray for Mark and Tara's marriage. Mm, yes. We ask for your protection over their relationship. May they walk in unity with each other and with you. May they honor each other, choosing to let their lives be an example of servanthood. Help them extend grace and support to each other as they do the work of ministry. I also lift up Lily and Jet to you as you have placed them in this family. Draw them close to yourself. May they experience your faithfulness daily in this new venture and see your hand at work in and through their lives as well as the lives of their parents. Today, we bless this family. We send them forth and release them to your faithful care. Be glorified through them. We praise you and look forward for all you're going to do through them and through Rooted Community Church to advance the kingdom of God in Topeka. In the mighty name of Jesus, so be it. Amen. Heavenly Father, you are so good. You are, you are holy, you're awesome, and you're above all. Um, you're worthy of our praise and, and this team this team of people, they are praising you uh, with what they're doing. I pray for I pray for courage for each of them. They're showing courage now, we know that, but I pray for them to continue to show courage. I pray for stamina and strength, but most of all that your Holy Spirit would just continue to work in them and, and grow in them and drive them and, and lead them. Yes, Jesus. Just, just reign in their lives, Lord. I love, um, you know, Jesus spoke to his disciples about a church, <laughs> and they didn't know what that meant. But after he left, six or eight of them were meeting and telling friends about what they had seen and experienced and who they knew. 
the next thing you knew, there were more than six or eight, and they went on and did something different. And, and then those two groups, those churches, they, they grew, and that's where that's where rooted community church is headed, Lord. We, it's just like Tim said, it's scary, but it's exciting. It's exciting to see Mark and Tara and the rooted community headed out to do what the early followers of Christ did. Just empower them. Lord, I pray for unity in their marriages, in their relationships, in their families. It's going to be tough. It's going to be challenging. But with unity and your Holy Spirit working in them, Lord, we just know you'll do good things. Bless these families. Bless these individuals. And Holy Spirit, Jesus, God, just do great things through them. In your mighty son Jesus' name, we pray these things. Father, we pray that you would pour out your favor on the people of Rooted Community Church, who today affirm um, their commitment to, to follow, to serve you in this new thing. Would you fill them with your spirit, fill them with your strength to carry out all the work that needs to be accomplished, work in them, work through them, <laughs> to lay the foundation upon which your kingdom will be built for generations. Would you extend your hand would you do mighty works through them as they join you, Jesus, in the work you're doing in this community? Give them a vision that burns in your heart first, that also burns in their hearts. Give them endurance to keep going until you call them to hand over the baton to the next generation. And we pray it all. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Mark and Tara, Rooted Community Church, you have been called by God for the glory of Jesus through the power of the Holy Spirit to a very special task here in Topeka. He has positioned and provided for you in obvious ways. And today we send you out with a reminder that applies to all of us. Take up your cross, die to yourself and follow Jesus. As your sending church, we, the people of Grace Point, commission you for the work of church planting. We pledge our prayers, encouragement, and support, our future partnership in the gospel, and to commemorate the commissioning of Rooted Community Church. We, where's Vince? There you are. We present you with this gift, but display it in your office, put it somewhere in the church. We're honored to give you the keys of the kingdom. As a reminder of the access to the kingdom you've been given through Jesus, the authority to help others enter his kingdom, and the knowledge of his kingdom that is at work in and through you. It's an affirmation of your call to go and make disciples. And with that, Rooted Community Church is officially commissioned as the first church plant of Grace Point. our seats. You guys can get back to your seat. Um, I think we're going to sing one more song that has a little bit to do with what we want to see happen in the future based on what God has done in the past. So I'm going to turn this over to the team and then uh, we'll wrap this up. Would you guys stand as we begin to sing? Listening is, sing this song is the reminder of the faithfulness of Jesus that we've saw just now as we've commissioned rooted that the faithfulness of Jesus goes on and it lives on through this church. So let's sing. Oh, 
call But you never failed me yet Waiting for change to come Knowing the battle's won
Um, if you need to connect with us for any reason, we have a QR code you can scan to fill out a connection card. Um, I want to remind you all that your faithful and generous giving is what allows us to do this, whether you're giving to Grace Point or to Rooted. So we want to just remind you of that, um, to take care of that today. There are some gray boxes in the back as you leave today. If you are coming to Grace Point next week, we're at two services, 9 and 11 a.m. So don't forget or you'll be there real early, okay? Um, and all you Rooted folks, I don't know any of your details because I'm not in charge of that. So uh, call Mark. <laughs> um, but as you go today, go in confidence that he has never failed and that all of this is for his glory and his goodness. Amen. You're dismissed. Have a good week.